Well, hello everybody. Just enjoying hanging out down in my garage. Hung down here in the garage last night. Hung down here in the garage nearly all day yesterday as well. Uh, organizing and all. And I pulled my uh, Hilux up right here and put the new mirrors on it that I bought a while back for it. And put, put them on, man, it was nice to get them on here. Yeah, nice to get the mirrors on. I've got these tubes here that I used to use back in the U.S. and they were easy to fold up and throw in a ballot buying box. And so I thought this white one had a big leak to it, like a big spot, but we blew it up yesterday and it held air nice and tight and we couldn't immediately find a leak, but it has wet down overnight. Um, maybe I'll just check and see if it's the valve stem or something. Uh, it does have like a little check valve on that and maybe it's weeping. I'll check it out. And then I had this this tube right here. It's great like floating on a river or floating on the water. And it had a little cut in it here. But I had some PVC patch and I patched it here yesterday. I ordered this PVC patch in the half or even like that paddle board and all which didn't know it actually came with its own patches when I bought it. But I bought a roll of the PVC material for patching these things and the glues, the solvents. So we'll see. We'll see if this holds or not. Um, I'll try it here in a little bit because it's had plenty of time to cure. Just try to have some of these things to enjoy with out there on the water. Of course, this is like a river tube in a way floating. That's why it even says river run on it. And put your drinks in it and ropes tie off around on it. It's got a little pillow that blows up. But it's nice to just go out here in a group and float right out here on the water when the water's pretty calm. We love doing that. And I like to have all these tubes. And of course, this is a tube for pulling behind the boat. In my cabinet here, I've got a brand new Hydro Boost tube that's never been taken out of the box for pulling behind the boat as well. See, I keep a lot of gears here, Yama lubes and Yama lubes. And so what I'm working on right now is this diesel here. Oh, Cap's out here with me. And yesterday, Mock Mock and I, we rolled this thing outside. And I went and got diesel, hooked up a fuel line on it, um, inlet here going into the filter. A return coming back out I uh, got me a battery set here hooked up and check out these terminals I bought these are very nice I ordered them in here actually off Lazada and it has a Allen a set that crimps down on the cables and for different size wires you've got different ones you can see down in the back here and that is very nice for that and you got a negative and a positive because the negative is a little smaller diameter right here than what the positive is. If you try to put this positive R on there, you can't get it tight enough. It'll just flop. But man, those are nice. And they also have a molded cap that goes over the top of the whole thing. A heavy duty cap. So I bought several sets of those to have, especially dealing with um, being out far on the water. You want some good quality ends and all there so did that filled it full of oil filled it full of water now i'll need to put coolant in here and you see this says engine coolant because this is a sealed system on here that actually has regular coolant in it just like your car and then it has an exchanger this is a big exchanger right here that takes seawater pumps that seawater through that exchanger and cools off the engine coolant. So the only place the seawater ever goes is just right here only, and then back out through the exhaust here, right here out into the exhaust and blows out the back of the boat and returns back to the ocean. So um, got the coolant in there. And then where seawater would come in, I've got a hose hooked up here for the inlet for the seawater to a water hose here. I can turn on from our gravity feed tank up on the roof and uh, pump through there to keep that cool. And what I've been down to now is chasing down this wiring harness. Cap's been here with me 
seeing what my nightmare is on it because all the color codes for it and for the dash don't match properly to chase them down colors just change midstream it'll be a blue wire that turns into a red wire or it'll be a I'm, I, it just changes constantly it is mayhem how they did this but we finally got it chased down and so I've got my uh, main hot that goes to my dash to my key switch I've got my starter wire right here to engage the starter and I've got my kill wire that goes to a relay that shuts off the fuel to the injection pump and those are the main ones I need here here it's ready to whirl over and this one here you connect it and it'll stop the fuel so we're gonna be giving it a try here and see if this thing will crank up and run or not. I also went on here and primed up the fuel system. I pumped and pumped on this thing yesterday. I could see the air when it would come through this line and it was finally coming out on the return. So hopefully I don't have to do too much cranking on it to get it to start, hopefully. Yeah, we will be finding out though. These fuel injectors are huge. They go way, way down inside the engine. Mm -hmm. All the way down through that whole cast of that head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Way down. I mean, they're about this long. Which Well, we got to cranking on it and it was kind of cranking slow and I had a very strong brand new battery. Um, but starter was cranking over slow and kind of smoking. And I told Cap, I think starter is going to go out and just about the time when the engine was going to start because we we're having to bleed all the air out of the injection pump, out of the injectors, you know, all that. Um, the starter took a dump. Yep, it, it smoked out and it quit. So you're probably not going to find that starter here or you're not going to be able to like pull it up by the book or anything like that. So what I did is what I've done before on my Hilux Surf. I jumped on eBay Australia, directly to eBay Australia. And um, you know that you're on the right one because when you log in up there and all, instead of it saying hi James like it does in the US account, it says good day. <laughs> I don't know how y'all say it just right. So uh, some of you subscribers from Australia don't beat me up, but you know, it's got the good day. Yeah. So you know you're in the right spot. And sure enough, I found the starter. 
found it for a very reasonable price. And we're not talking about expensive shipping or nothing either. Very reasonable, and it says it includes all custom and duty fees or anything. There's nothing else I need to do or pay. And I, I thought that that was pretty cool. Now, we're talking about eBay. We're not talking about Amazon. In fact, I couldn't find it on Amazon. There was nothing, nothing available for this particular motor on Amazon. But eBay, yeah, and especially eBay Australia and in UK. So um, the difference too is, is that the same start out of UK was gonna cost me like over 400 and something dollars. And it was the exact same starter that was for sale down out of Australia. And it was only around a hundred dollars. Crazy, right? And to get it here from the UK was gonna be very expensive and a lot of nonsense and a long time. And to get it here from Australia was just cheap and quick and I've already got notification the starter is already here in the Philippines um, it's already like well, just in a couple of days already see I ordered that on I ordered that on Sunday and today's Wednesday and it's already here in the Philippines and out to be for delivery that's pretty freaking cool yeah and I'll suggest that to some of you if there's some things that you need I've had good luck with this before on ordering things. Go to eBay Australia. And if you're gonna be shipping and maybe you've already got an eBay account back in the US, you can go in and add an additional shipping address and you can toggle between them. So, you know, um, on this one, you know, it recognized I had a USA address, it recognized I had a Philippines address. I switched to it and it gave me the Philippine prices and shipping and customs and all. So just give me a little lesson there, a little sharing right there of information. So I haven't sidetracked on the boat motor thing. I was actually going to shoot a video of starting this diesel up for you guys. I started shooting the video of the procedure of doing that and the starter took a dump and that ended that. And I'll tell you about this starter thing. I always count these things as a blessing. I don't look at it as a negative. I guess I'm that glass half full kind of guy all right because nothing is the bigger killjoy and ripping away excitement than having a breakdown out on the water and so i thought it is such a blessing that that starter went out now like it didn't crank that engine numerous times and i get it all down the boat and we hit the water and then i have a starter failure out on the water that's no fun I really want to make sure that I can go over everything I can before I drop that motor and that boat and fix all these little ins and outs and intricate little things because I want safety, safety, safety. And um, I have a kicker motor for, if y'all know what a kicker motor is, it's basically like an outboard that you'll strap on the back of the boat with a bracket and you can have a backup engine like a little small outboard to drop down and get you on in and get you to shore if your main engine goes down. And they're pretty popular on boats that go far out in the water into dangerous areas that only have a singular engine like my boat does. Some boats will have dual engines in the rear and this one don't. So that is something else I have is a kicker motor and I'll probably end up putting it on there. 